It hasn't even been a full week since RPCSX UI dropped on Android. And boom, we're already getting another major update. In this video, we're testing the latest version of RPCSX, checking out the best performing games, and showcasing a solid game collection that runs great on this PS3 emulator. From massive bug fixes to smoother performance and exciting new features, this update makes RPCSX even more powerful on Android. Now the big question is, does it work on all Android devices? Can it run high-end games? Are these improvements enough, or does it still need more time? Let's get started. Now let's see how to download the latest RPCSX UI Android emulator. Fortunately, the RPCSX emulator is an open source project and is now available on GitHub. Simply visit the GitHub page and here you will find all the available versions. Open the latest release and download the APK file. Then install it if you already has the emulator, then update the emulator. The main interface hasn't changed much, which keeps it familiar. However, I do think they should consider adding a logo next to the RPCSX title. It would make the app look more polished and professional. Now let's head into the settings. You'll notice two major new options, download channels and controls. Let's start with download channels. What does this do? Well, it now gives you direct access to download updates and files straight from GitHub. Yes, you heard that right, RPCSX UI Android can now automatically fetch the latest updates from GitHub. Not only that, but you can also download custom GPU drivers directly within the app, which is incredibly useful for improving compatibility and performance. You can choose between two update types, stable release for the most reliable experience, developer version for early access to the latest features and experimental builds. Now, RPCSX supports controllers. It may have had basic controller support before, but in this release, they've introduced input mapping support. This new feature allows users to customize their own control layout, giving them a more personalized and comfortable gaming experience. Whether you're using a Bluetooth gamepad or a wired controller, you can now remap the buttons to suit your playstyle perfectly. Let's install the firmware and essential components for running PS3 games. Fortunately, the official PlayStation 3 firmware is available on PlayStation's website so you can easily download it. Using the latest PS3 firmware in RPCSX improves game compatibility and ensures better system stability. Once downloaded, click on Install Firmware in the emulator and navigate to the folder where the file is saved, usually the Downloads folder. The installation will begin immediately but it may take five to 10 minutes to compile the files, so be patient. Now let's add games. Click on the plus icon, then either select a game directory or navigate to the folder where your games are stored. Disclaimer, the emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is not. I do not support or provide access to pirated games. Please use legal copies for your own safety. Again, it will take some time to compile the games, and that depends on both the game size and your device's performance. Let's start with the best settings. First, head over to the advanced settings. You'll notice many new options here. One of the key improvements is the ability to adjust the core PPU decoder and thread settings. Before making changes, check your phone's thread count in the system info. Some of these settings can significantly improve performance, but if you're unsure, it's completely fine to stick with the default settings. In the VFS settings, you can set the disk cache, which determines how much RAM will be used. It's important to adjust this according to your device's available RAM for the best performance. Now let's talk about the most anticipated update, the video settings. Here you can choose between OpenGL and Vulkan as your rendering API. Personally, I recommend Vulkan for better performance on most devices. If you're running high-end games, lowering the resolution such as 720 can really help boost performance. You can also set the aspect ratio and adjust the frame rate, which can go up to 120 frames per second. Sometimes 30 FPS helps to reduce the stutter, otherwise use auto. Enable V-Sync, which helps eliminate screen tearing. You can also toggle stretch mode for full screen gameplay. At the bottom, you will find Vulkan, open it, then VRAM set as per your RAM, then open custom driver, then enable turbo mode. Enable performance overlay to monitor the performance of your gameplay. Another very useful option is resolution scale. Sometimes you can reduce it to get more smoothness, but it will reduce the quality. There are plenty more new features here to explore. Another exciting addition is keyboard and mouse support. Yes, you can now use them for smoother control. Also, the network settings and save state features have seen notable improvements, making your gameplay experience even better. 
Lastly, there's one more powerful feature you should definitely use if your device has a Snapdragon chipset custom GPU driver support. Installing the appropriate driver for your chip can greatly enhance graphics and performance. However, this feature is limited to Snapdragon users. If you're using a different chipset, unfortunately, it won't be available for you. This update makes playing PS3 games on Android smoother and more user-friendly than ever. But there's still a long road ahead to make it perfect for every device. So, keep an eye on our channel, stay tuned for more updates, and don't forget to subscribe for the latest news. See you next time!